you know, you've talked about soul care and, but you've really talked about spiritual disciplines. Like what do you, what are you like, what do you think people need to lean into in this moment? What do you see? And maybe explain those, those things that you see as priorities for people. Well, I think it's going to be again, different for everybody. Uh, Spiritual disciplines are these, are these, as you know, these practices by which we cooperate with the work that the spirit is doing. So the spiritual disciplines, whether, whatever it is, does, do not themselves produce growth towards Christ-likeness. It's only the Spirit that does, the Holy Spirit that does that. So what these disciplines do then is, is um, put us in the, in the crosshairs, put us in the flow of what the Spirit's doing, which means then that in any given time, there are probably some, a handful of core basic disciplines that we want to be regularly engaging in. For me, they're always going to be solitude and silence, uh, reading, meditating, memorizing, carrying the word of God, scripture, uh, both in bulk and more particularly in seasons like this in depth. This is a season for me of slow read, not bulk read. Uh, And I can talk about why that is in a minute if you want. Yes. Uh, prayer as ongoing conversation uh, that is not pretty, that is real, that brings uh, the language of maybe lament, of anger, of sadness, uh, as being a legitimate expression of our conversations with God's. Um, I think for me, journaling or reflecting in some objective way is has become a a kind of a baseline discipline for seasons like this uh, because I don't want to miss what's going on uh, in in the middle of this and writing it out praying I I tend to write my prayers and reflections when, when, when you talk about journaling and I mean again this is I met you at 19 and I think that's when I started journaling and your spiritual disciplines class um, and I, I know I have that you're talking about intentional reflection about you, the condition of your soul or your heart and your experience in the world and where it God includes is. that. It includes that. One of the things that is really helpful in this season is the practice of examine or examine, yeah. which is every day or every two or three days or once a week, just sit still with the spirit and look back, invite him to bubble up. You know, where has God been present and I, I, I missed it? Where, where has God been present and I was aware of it? Uh, and, and the goal here is to move the horizon of awareness of God's presence closer to the horizon of the event itself mm-hmm. so that I can practice his presence on a 24-7 basis because he is with me. He is with us always. Uh, we're not, however, always with him much less always with ourselves. We're somewhere else we tend to be. And so examine is one of those that kind of pins us to a place and time. But also journaling can be an expression of prayers. It can be a, 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 an all caps outrage. It can be a, 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 I, I have a, a friend who journals by doodling uh, who, who draws, um, Mm. when they are praying for a person or a situation, they'll write the name in the middle of the page and then just use varying colors to reflect prayers as it emerges. Uh, and, uh, it's, they produce what I consider to be works of prayer art. Mm. They're iconographic. They're stunningly beautiful and evocative. That's not the purpose. It, the purpose is to pray. The purpose is to relate. So those basic disciplines for me, kind of those four or five that are Sol- in there. Solitude, solitude and silence, prayer, silence, prayer word, scripture. and journal or reflecting. But then that. layered on top of that, uh, this is also, and, and maybe I should say this, for many people, especially with uh, young kids at home, like preschool which or every, anybody now, the primary spiritual discipline is taking care of your kids. So if you don't have time to pray the way you used to, that's fine. Yeah. 
you know, care for your kids. That's your prayer. If you don't have time to memorize and read scripture the way you're used to, that's fine. Just care well for your kids. That's your offering to God. That's how the spirit will uh, shape you towards Christ likeness, uh, Mm -hmm. which is the point of the disciplines. Anyway, it's not so that I can say that I read the Bible is as important as that is. It's so that I can be formed to Christ likeness. And I think the spirit knows that I've got three kids under the age of five at yeah. home and I don't have headspace for yeah. anything other than, you know, well, so care of them. this has been, I mean, ongoing conversation Alex and I've had <laughs> with you over the last six years since we've had Ezra, but also, you know, reading domestic monastery, Ronald Hol- Rollheiser's book ex- really encouraged you to read that if you haven't and you have little kids, but can you ex- go into a little more depth on that? And also we need to come back because talk about why you're doing slow reading versus lots okay. of, but this idea, cause I've talked about it. I've preached on it. I've shared this concept and I would love for you to go in because it's, I've, I've actually heard from feedback from moms who have been like, well, I've been trying to do, you know, my raising my kids as a spiritual discipline, but, but I, you know, they're, they're not reading scripture. They're not doing any of those other things. And it's almost like that has been used as an excuse to not engage in those things. Um, But, but in my, in anyways, trying to frame them and say, look, the practice of raising your children, like offering that, like setting that before the Lord as the gift of worship, as the gift of devotion of self-sacrifice, right. All things that Jesus does. Right. Um, So So how would, how would you help us like walk that through? Cause yeah, that's really a good qualifier because it's not, if you have space and time for the other things, great. But if you don't, uh, then, then it, it it is the, the goal of the discipline is to ask the question, how would Jesus do this? If he were me, what are the practices? What are the disciplines? What are the things that he would have put in place if he were parenting my children? Not if Jesus were, but if Jesus were me. Got my gifts, my talents, my abilities, my personality, my marriage, my kids, all of that. How would Jesus live his life out instead of as a, a 30-year-old blue-collar worker in first century Palestine? How would he do it as a harried and hurried uh, mom uh, it's that's the key. And so it's this regular invitation that Jesus did on the way, right? So it's an invitation to the father to be present and to be attentive. So it's Lord, we pray uh, bathing our kids. We pray putting them uh, to bed or getting them up. We pray the feeding of them. We have this ongoing internal almost conversation that is an invitation to glorify. Lord, I want to glorify you in cleaning up this mess for the 83rd time today. I want to, it's the kind of the ongoing practice of presence because if this is your reality, this is where you'll meet God, and it's actually the only place you're going to meet God. You don't meet him in some idealized future out there. You meet him in the real here and now. Um, most of us uh, can squeeze, not everybody, but can squeeze five to ten minutes for just a discipline of mindfulness yeah. that will enable us to become present, to breathe deeply and pay attention to breathing and being in our body in time and place, or mm. to take a verse or a chunk of verses and start to carry it around in our consciousness. So we're, we're aware of God with us in those moments and inviting that kind of ongoing conversation.